Hi again then guys and welcome to another car review from the very first Forza Horizon game on the Xbox 360 of course and it's been, like I said, a long time since we last reviewed a car but when I was looking back through the previous reviews that I did in that game it's kind of crazy actually that the car that I wouldn't have thought would get many views actually has more views than all of the others. The Mercedes S65 AMG review for some weird reason has like 7,000 views, which is really crazy. I, I don't really understand why. I would have thought if anything, something like the Koenigsegg CCXR or maybe the Maserati MC12 Corsa would have those kind of views, but for some reason it's a Mercedes limo, which is cool. It's just kind of strange. Now, as far as this car goes, I find this one very curious as well, in a similar category to that Mercedes, because it seems like the kind of car that wouldn't be too difficult as far as licensing, and yet it's only in this game. And in fact, I would argue this car even more so than the Mercedes S65 because the other versions, in fact, a number of other versions of this car are featured in multiple Forza games. It's even been on the box of one of the Forza games, Forza 4, I think it was. And that is, of course, the Ferrari 458 Italia. But in particular, it's the open top, aka Spider. Now, I would go so far as to say that this is easily, it's not even close for me, easily my favourite version of the 458. And when I actually reviewed the 458 Italia in Gran Turismo Sport, probably a couple of months ago now, I said a number of things about the car that still apply in the Forza franchise as well. And that is that I find the 458 to be a very curious car for me because it's definitely one of my favorite Ferraris in terms of the way it looks, the way it sounds, the way it handles, and yet it wouldn't even crack my top 100 favorite cars. And I've actually listed them and it's not in there. That's weird for me, because usually if I love as many things about a car as I do about the 458, I would classify it as one of my favourite cars. But for some reason, I just can't quite put it on my list, and I don't know why. And this one, for me, has even more reasons to love it. Now, my favourite things about the 458 are definitely the interior and the sound. It sounds among the best supercars ever made, which is kind of unexpected. I mean, it's a Ferrari, I know, but... Even so, it sounds more impressive than a lot of V12 supercars, in fact, and I love modern Ferrari interiors. The FF is what made me realise that. The 458 is also a gorgeous car on the inside. And, of course, buttresses. <laughs> As I've said before, buttresses are one of my favourite design cues of an open-top car. The CLK GTR road car has it, a number of others do as well. And that is, for those who don't know, the two humps, if you will, behind the passenger and driver's head. This car, I think, has some gorgeous buttresses, and I think it looks way better than the coupe version. It suits being an open-top for sure. Now, in terms of the spec, the question is, of course, how does it compare? Because usually... An open-top car, especially for racing, would have every disadvantage. They are more often than not heavier, because they have to be. The ground uh, floor pan, if you will, has to be reinforced, because you don't have any A-pillar, you don't have any roof strength. It's all gone. It's just the floor pan holding the car together. Plus, they don't tend to be as quick as the coupe versions either. It tends to be more about the fun factor and the showiness. Think again of the CLK GTR road car. When it comes to some, though, you will occasionally find that an open-top car does retain a lot of the performance of the coupe, and a perfect example of that is the Zonda Club Sport Roadster, which is still a very fast car and can easily rival the hardtop Zonda F. Now, when it comes to this one, Ferrari, at least according to the specs and performance in the game, of course, rather than real life, they did a great job of making it still feel at least as good as the coupe does. You don't feel any kind of body roll. Of course, this is more of an arcade-style Forza game anyway, but even so, the handling is still spot on. One of my favourite things about the way the 458 feels, both with a hard or soft top, is the balance of the steering. And again, I spoke about that in my GT Sport review of it, where the handling just feels, I would say, perfectly balanced. It's got a very short back end and a very long nose cone in comparison, and that feels perfect for mid-engine Ferraris. It makes the turn in fantastic, it can easily hold a drift, plus it gives it a very attractive, very Ferrari-esque shape. It makes it very distinctive in that way. Now, as far as the specs go, another common thing for an open top is that they're more expensive. So this one, for instance, is 257,000 credits. It is in the S category, 
with 653 performance points. The engine, of course, is a 4.5 litre V8, naturally aspirated. It has the same 562 horsepower, 398 pound feet of torque as the coupe, and the weight actually isn't bad. It weighs 1535 kilos, which can sound quite a lot compared to like a hypercar, for instance. But again, you have to remember it has to be reinforced because it doesn't have the roof to help with that. And at the same time, this is, in effect, the open top version of the base model. So it's not designed to be a hardcore track car, it's designed to be exactly what it is. It's a long distance continental seaside cruiser that you could drive to Monaco, look very nice in, make a lot of noise, and it will go fast as well. It's not designed to break lap records or race or anything like that. This is the most poser-esque variant of the 458 that you can buy, arguably. And with all of that being considered, it still does a great job of being a performance car. Now back when the online servers used to be going strong for Horizon 1, I used to most commonly use this car in S-Class, where of course it already sits, but tuned right up to the limits of S-Class as a straight line car. So I wouldn't upgrade the handling or the weight, I would focus more on the power. Now I can't recall exactly how much power you could get out of it while keeping it in S category, but I think it might have been somewhere around six to 700 horsepower. And with the handling already being so good and the fact that it is much lighter on its feet than the weight would suggest, it certainly does not feel that heavy. You could easily mistake this for being maybe a 1350 kilo car, for instance, which is about the same as a GT3 race car, in other words. When you just upgrade the power, the handling takes care of itself. It was a brilliant car. I was surprised how few people actually used it. And even in some of the loading screens of the game, the car gets a lot of airtime. So again, it really surprises me. And I find it very strange that they have never featured this car before or since. Some of them make sense. You know, Koenigsegg CCXR, maybe the MC12 Corsa came back. Maybe the S65 wasn't popular enough. But a 458 Spider, I mean... They've still got the 458 in the game, they've got the Speciale, they've got GT3 racing variants, GTEs, so to not have the open top, it's a curious choice, especially in the Horizon games, which are kind of all about the open air, test drive unlimited kind of vibe. But for whatever reasons, they haven't brought it back yet, at least. For me though, it's easily one of the standout cars from the first Horizon game, probably one of my favourites in the game as well, and still a curious car for me because I love so many things about it, and yet I still wouldn't call it one of my favourite cars, which is weird. I kind of wish that I could say that. And the only conclusion that I can come to is that maybe it's because it's so oversaturated. That's pretty much the reason why I'm not a huge fan of the Subaru WRX, and more of a fan of the Evo, because you don't see them around that much, and they don't tend to be as over-the-top modified and chavified, if you will, and oversaturated. And this, I think, kind of falls into that category. Uh, not so much the modification, but how many of them you see around. It's one of the most common supercars out there. But overall, that's it for my thoughts on the 458 Spider. Love the look of the car. Of course, I wish they'd bring it back, but whether or not they will, of course, remains to be seen. But that's it for this installment. Of course, I will see you guys next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.